Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. I think it's number 250. I think. But it might not be. But I'm pretty sure it is. I have this vague recollection of typing number 249 in the previous or the last one that I recorded couple of days ago so yeah I'm pretty sure this is it's not episode 250 because there isn't any real continuation it's more it's not episodic it's more mm, I don't know really anyway only listen to this whence you can safely close your eyes and I'd just like to say thank you to those of you that have left testimonials on my website and please if you do like what I do if you do like do 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 then please go to my website and leave a testimonial and you can also read the testimonials that are on there as well if you fancy it there's also oh, oh I'm yawning I don't know why I told you that it's obviously it was, it was a yawn I've got a gift me page as well on my website where you can send me gifts if you want Uh, if you do like this uh, podcast or any of my other podcasts maybe you can share it on Facebook or on Twitter (laughs) I was going to say or on Google Plus do you remember Google Plus? yeah now that was a success so yeah it's uh, or you could just tell people I actually spoken to a couple of people this week and they well three people actually some have contacted me in the last week saying that they're fairly new listeners and one's called Michelle one's called Melanie or Mel possibly Michelle and Mel sounds like they could be friends doesn't it Michelle and Mel could be like a sitcom or a TV show Shell and Mel or Mel and Shell and uh I had, a, uh, I had a, a message today saying from someone that left a testimonial saying that she only just started listening but um, had the, you know, a couple of nights really good sleep but again I'm not sure what she was listening to I mean as far as the podcasts go because I got a few I got a few and this is just one of the many and I've got I've only got a handful of popular ones my chair is so squeaky I'm 
might do one of these where I just whisper all the way through, just like that. What do you think? Occasionally I just do a whisper thing. But not today. Um, I've got my front door being replaced tomorrow. And I've been, I don't know why, but I'm also, I'm almost been trying to prepare myself for it. Yeah, there's nothing for me to do. All I've got to do is just nothing. They replace it. They, they do all the work. I don't, you know, I'm not. A door replacer. But I started thinking, what if they need to use my toilet? So I clean my toilet. And I started thinking, oh, if they do, they're going to come into the flat, you know, briefly, only like front door area, but that's the area that Andre likes to go to the toilet. On paper, I should add. Um, but occasionally has the odd accident and stuff and I, I do I've got a carpet cleaner like I purchased a carpet a proper it's not industrial but it's a proper carpet vax carpet cleaner and I clean the areas that he uses to go to the toilet even though I put paper down for him and stuff but it's still um, and also just the carpet gets mucky it's constantly just, I don't know how to explain it, it just spreads dirt everywhere. It's, uh, although, in his defence, I do have a little bathtub full of dirt <laughs> that I've put specifically in the living room for him to play in. So I kind of... Uh, encouraged it and at the moment there's um, foam all over the hallway because I had a box uh, which is a, a shelf uh, set like a it was a shelf but it was a shelf rack set of shelves I don't know you know one that you put together and then you ensemble it and then stick it on the wall. It's not a big shelf. It's like a smaller shelf. Than a, smaller than a big one. And. I. I unpacked part of it. In the hallway. Just left it there. So I took the shelves out. And stood them up against the wall. But I left the box just lying down. And inside the box was styro is it styrofoam? Cellophone, styrofoam, you know that white stuff that um, is used for packaging. And it breaks, but it's, it's when it breaks it goes bing. Or that doesn't go bing, but it goes you, you can snap it but it also it almost looks like I guess it's what you would use for snow if you had a not if you not really it's not really snow but if you was perhaps doing a a snowy scene on stage in a pantomime or some kind of play which isn't professional um, I imagine you'd perhaps use that as as snow you know because from a distance it's white and from a distance it's almost snowyish. anyway Andre's been ripping it to bits he loves it I've now got rid of it all but he likes to scratch it and you know, play with it when 
I'm in, when I'm in bed, basically, that, that is his time to, I don't know if he has a list of things that annoy me that he does. Um, but that's one of the, the recent things that he's been doing. He had one in his shed, and I didn't realise it was in there. I just, I must have just put it, lent, lent it up against the side inside the shed, and uh, I was woken up at some time, you know, silly time in the morning, and he's, he's basically fighting with it, you know. There's so much noise. And. It was just a bit. I, I had to take it off him in the end. I had to. I think I put it on top of the shed. To you know, just to hide it from him, so he can't get to the top of the shed. Although I say that, if he really, really wanted to, he'd find a way. He's. I think tenacious is an understatement for him he never gives up ever always he will never give up until he gets what he wants and that's a pretty amazing quality really in some ways and ext extremely annoying in others so at the moment he's in the bedroom I'm not sure what he's doing I just took him out for a late night walk with my friend and his dog and so he usually gets quite wet because he you know, rubs in the grass and stuff gets a bit muddy so what he likes to do normally if he's really wet and muddy when we get back he jumps onto the bed and dries himself off on my bed quilt that's his thing, which is really it's quite horrible, really, isn't it? It's a bit disgusting, but honestly, my flat and my belongings are just for his use. <laughs> just everything, which is why, which is why, I have been making some changes to my home. Which is a bit weird, really, because it's taken me over four years to do some of the stuff that I've been planning to do. Um, and only I've, I've done two of those things today. So the first thing, which it's not in order of whatever, but... I bought a few bits over the last couple of months. I bought some bits to try and make the flat a bit better. Like I got the shed that was more for making recordings. However, it needs soundproofing, so there's still quite a lot to be done there before I can use it for that. What I didn't know, like I'm not an expert on sheds, and I had no idea this is what happens to sheds, but when it was put together, bearing in mind that it was basically uh, already put together really in a sense of the, the sides, just basically four sides a bottom a base you know and, a, and a, a top and a door so it was it was all kind of put together but what I didn't realise is it's not um, there's big gaps in it you know this the the wood as it's been I don't know how they, they make the shed to start with, but there's gaps between the wood. It's not sealed. 
critical, which means I'm going to need to first of all get some sealer, some soundproof seal to put in between and to basically seal every gap in the shed up on the outside then on the inside and then put some other stuff some foam or something and then I've got the soundproof I've got all the soundproofing pads that I need that should cover it should like um, cover the whole thing which should be fine it's just uh, it's quite a lot I haven't got a light in there but I'm going to get one next week when I next get paid I'll get a it's going to be like a battery operated light it's like 19 pound or something and it's so it'll just attach to the wood I think it's got like a little attachment thing which means I'll be able to see you know just be able to see see my, not see myself I'm not going to be doing my eyebrows while I'm doing a recording but just you know so there's light in there really But then one thing that I've noticed, because I have actually made a few recordings when I first got it, that's before Andre decided to, uh, well basically he's taken it for himself, he's moved in, Andre has. Honestly I couldn't believe it. He's, I looked in there today and he's got his little snake in there which he he's moved from the living room all the way into the shed so I don't know what else he's brought in there but that sh that snake is a big pink and white snake it's a lot longer than him and he it squeaks right I can kind of see you know, it's got like a little squeaky thing inside it he does not like me touching it. Really, it's the only thing, it's not the only thing, I mean, he doesn't really like me touching his toys, but that's the one thing that he's really possessive about. So if I touch it and I kind of play with it, he'll grab it off me and he'll run into another room with it and he'll hide it. Isn't that weird? So I kind of, me and my friend, we sort of decided that it must be like a, his child. Like, you know, like a, he thinks of it like it's his, his baby or something. And he doesn't, um, doesn't use it in the same way that he uses some of the other stuff that he uses if that's it's a bit of a vague one but he does certain things with other um, toys teddies with my slipper but he doesn't use the snake for that so I think it's it's his family it's his he's very possessive about it and he hides it he doesn't just leave it on the floor anywhere he always puts it somewhere really safe, hides it behind something, like underneath the chair or behind the t behind the door so it can't be seen, or, you know, he'd get it under the bed if he could probably, so he always does that, sometimes he puts it in the kitchen, but now it's in the, it's in the shed. And that's where he stays. He doesn't stay there. He's now spending more time in the bedroom, which is kind of normal this time of year, actually. He he goes through periods when he spends a lot of time in bed, in my bed, and he's doing that quite a lot. But he sort of seems to be moving from my bed to the shed, and comes into the living room 
have something to eat, have something to drink, maybe have a play, you know. He likes to do a, a circulation of the flat, likes to do a patrol. So he will he'll run to the front door, check, then run into the bathroom, look in there, then he'll come out of the bathroom, run into the kitchen, just check, and then run into the living room and check, then he'll run back into the bedroom, and back onto the bed, or back into the shed. He just does a little survey just to make sure that everything's okay. Because this is his home, isn't it? I'm the lodger, yet again. So, he's, uh, what I've done is I've got a television bracket for the wall. I bought it a while back. And I also got some... What, I put, I put the TV bracket and I, I've done that so I put the telly on the wall now it's, it's way too high I'm kind of looking up but it's supposed to be good for you to look up rather than to look down before I was looking down because no I mean I didn't have the TV flat on the floor I mean, that would have been weird but um, it's alright it's face up I don't know that would be strange but the TV's now kind of nearer the ceiling than perhaps it should be. So I might look at maybe reducing it down a little bit. Maybe a foot. <laughs> but I'm happy, yeah, I'm, I'm happy it's on the wall because now I freed up all that space where the TV was. Now Andre has extra space to play, which I think is it's got to be a good thing. And uh, I've moved. I've got one, two, three, four, four big black bookcases. And I've moved them. So I've been moving stuff around between the bedroom and from the other side of this room. So I've now got four bookcases, two on one wall, two on the other wall. So it's kind of in a non L shape, but you know, like two going to the corner and the other two coming from the other corner. And then I've got a little bookcase just underneath the plug socket where I can charge my phone and uh, the Kindle and you know, stuff like that. So the other side of the room is completely bare now. Well, it will be when I tidy up. It's not. There's still lots of stuff on the floor um, that this needs tidying. It's not, not really messy, but a little bit. But the wall is completely bare. There's nothing there. Not even a tear as I stare. <laughs> Eating a pear. So yeah, it's, it's, it's quite nice. Um... I think it's because, see, with the bedroom, I don't like clutter. And I've now got a shed in my bedroom, which is the opposite to not having clutter. I mean, I've basically, I've reduced the bedroom size by one third. But at the same time, I'm quite lucky to have a bedroom that's big enough to fit three garden sheds in or to three to fit three double beds in if that makes you know it's 
so I shouldn't really complain. I'm not complaining, I'm just noticing that with the shed, it's a lot longer than it needs to be. I didn't think I'd ever say that out loud. It's, it's really, it's, the length of it could be halved, I think, and I'd still have enough room to do it all, all I need is just to sit there I suppose because it is a bit longer it doesn't feel quite as cramped because the sides of it there's a chair in there and there's not really much room either side of the chair so the sides there's only um I think it's three foot Wide, six foot long, I think. So if it was three foot by three foot, I don't think that's that wouldn't be enough. I'd need at least four foot, which is not really enough. Wide ways, it's literally, it's just I can't. Um, spread the way I do with this chair this chair wouldn't fit in there this chair is way too big but if this chair didn't squeak I'd be very comfortable sitting in this chair making recordings although I am sitting in this chair making a recording now and I do feel quite comfortable so, so it's kind of I uh, don't know what that's about some of you know it's it's one of those chairs where it's fine as long as you don't move but if you move then it creaks very much like my skeletal system these days. Very creaky, creaky, creaky. I'd like, um, I do hope to get a new chair at some point. But so many things I need to get for this flat. I need a new carpet. Because I don't want, I, can't, I know I keep blaming Andre for everything, but. I'm not the one that ripped up the carpet. You know, I didn't chew the carpet up. I can't blame myself for that. You know, I don't want to blame him, but he has, he ruined the carpet. And you know what? I'd do it all again for that little boy. He's, uh, it's definitely improved my life so so what if I have to get a new carpet every few years so that I'm going to aim next year to buy a new carpet but I don't think I'm going to be able to do it all in one go like I did last time because I spent £600 and it was discounted as well so they said and they did the bedroom, living room and hallway for six hundred pound. I think it was might have been a little bit more, but it was about six hundred. And that was for four and a half years ago. Was it April May? Yeah, four and a half years ago. So if I get a when, of course it this might be, I might, I might try and get a loan from the social, from the, the benefits people and get a loan to, to do, to get a new carpet, but I'd need at least a thousand pounds I reckon, but 
But uh, what I want to do, I want to get uh, a really thick, soundproofed carpet. Just so so that downstairs can't hear me and so I can't hear downstairs. I'm really lucky I've got the best neighbour. It's very, very quiet. Um, I do wonder if I can be heard. I mean, apart from when I'm drilling the walls and stuff, but that's, which I was today, but that's not a regular occurrence with me. You know, any DIY I get up to, she's probably not going to hear. And I just think that it'd be nice to prepare because you never know what, who you're going to end up with. Like a neighbour, she, you know, the neighbour downstairs may move out and I might end up with someone with a, like a drum kit or something down there, which would um, be awful. <laughs> it would be awful. Uh, so I need to kind of prepare for that beforehand so that I can make sure that it, it it's quiet also so that I'm quiet as well because I started uh, well I took my ukulele out of the box the other day and I tuned it I tuned it it's only got four strings, but it was very out of tune. But uh, I've got a tuner, um, which I bought probably a couple of months ago now. I've had the ukulele since the summer. And I've taken it out of the box three times now. It's now on top of the bookcase. It was in the bedroom on top of the bookcase. Now it's in the living room on top of the bookcase. I'm not sure if... I don't know. I've got a bit of an aversion to... I don't think I've got... I've not really got big fingers. I've got... I haven't got sausage fingers, you know, but I haven't got tiny fingers either. So I struggle a little bit with the chords. Um, when there's more than three strings being pressed at the same time, it's a little bit. It's just practice. I know that all it is is practice. I do. I know that. I used to play the violin when I was a kid. I used to play the bugle. I used to play the drums. I used to play the glocking spill. I used to play the bagpipes. No, I didn't. But oh man, I would love to have played the bagpipes. It looks, it looks so complicated. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it was way too complicated. Because you, you breathe in, but then you don't breathe in and you breathe out. And it's like, wow. The bugle is the easiest, one of the easiest instruments to play. Because... There's no, like with a trumpet, you know, you press down on the knobs. So there's no knob action at all with the, with the bugle. You're literally just holding the end. And you, you're almost spitting into it. That sounds a little bit dirty, but it's, it's like, like that into the mouthpiece that's why you can share a bugle with someone but you don't share the mouthpiece you know you definitely keep your own mouthpiece to yourself and you take it out when you're not using it 
in case someone else grabs your bugle and starts blowing on it because you don't want someone else's spit on on your instrument you know so I I quite liked playing the bugle because I think really all you need for a bugle you need to be able to have a sense of um, what's the right word be able to be in tune so you have to be able to be in tune so you need to be able to hear a tune hear a chord doesn't matter what the chord's called because that makes no difference because you learn a bugle by listening to other people do it and you do what they do so one of the tunes with because I was in the Sea Cadets and it was do do so you just do that you just hear it you go and you go it's not a very good example but but it's easy as long as you can tune your ears to do exactly what the other person is doing and I don't know either I had a good ear for a, for tune for, you know an in tune ear I say or that helped me to have an in tune ear by practicing but years before that I was playing the violin so I guess and I used to be able to, I used to be able to read music can you believe it you used to be able to read music and play the violin whilst looking at the sheet of music I had no idea what it said but I'd learn <laughs> I'd just look at it anyway and I'd turn it over when the other person did but I'd memorise the, the tune I think it was just twinkle twinkle little star but that's not the point oh, I remember I actually see my brain is a little bit modelled up just generally but um, the memory my memory is I had violin limb lessons in junior school for the, the probably pre year maybe two years I don't know but I used to have lessons not not like lessons in school but actually private one to one lessons um, during break time like once or twice a week it'd be taken up by my like, half my lunch hour or whatever and then I had to practice and then the choir would get together and you know all that stuff and the band and we'd all play, play together so but my memory of being on stage doing it was me and another kid playing the violin together. So we had to do it in harmony. Um, I'd do it at the same time, rather. I wasn't kind of harmonising, you know, like doing a different tune, but like... I wasn't going... That's my impression of a violin being harmonious mm. so I my memory of doing this recital this uh, 
violin recital was in high school and my parents came along and watched it for some reason so I'm very confused about what is actually real and what wasn't you know I knew what was real then but I can't remember because it's such a long time ago you know you think I was it's 40 years ago that I was doing violin lessons when I was like nine 40 years it's ridiculous isn't it I'm nearly halfway through my life can you believe that it's like wow And what other things? What other lies can I tell? Uh, yeah, I just have this memory of going in the front one of the doors, there's there's different entrances to the high school. But one entrance to the high school was a door you go through, they're handy and they for that, and one of many doors in that building. It's a very old school, very old. And you go, and directly ahead was the assembly room for the whole school. That was bit whistly wasn't it whole school um, it was the assembly room and it held everybody the whole I don't know how many hundreds it wasn't it wasn't that many it couldn't have been more than a couple of hundred people maybe 300 kids it wasn't like a huge there was another high school that had a lot more, was a lot bigger, a lot more kids and stuff. Because I used to go there and do karate in the uh, Tuesday and Thursday evenings when I was about 14. Or well, from 14 to 15. For a couple of years anyway. From 14 till I left school, what was it 13? I lose track again, I lose track. I lose track. And so I kind of got to know some of the, I got to know some of the kids in Orwell, which is what it's called, and some of the kids in my school, the high school. But also because I went to diff three different junior schools. I know I kind of lost contact with a lot of them, but um, I actually had already been to school with most of the kids my age in junior school. It just, it had been a couple of years earlier, so they'd probably forgotten me. So I kind of had my, had a foot in each camp well, I had more than a foot in my own school. Plus, both my older brothers went to the other school, the other high school. So I kind of... Plus, 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 plus. I was in the Sea Cadets. And there was loads of kids from the other school there as well when I was 12. And I had a paper round. So I got to know other kids that were at that school. The karate club, there was kids that from that school as well. This, you know, you just get to know different people, isn't it? In fact, there was kids that just were in my road. Actually, no, they all went to my school. It doesn't make sense. The only reason I had to go to my school is because of the road I lived in. I live near town right that's the logic 
that's that's the logic yet my older brothers both lived in the same house in the same road and they went to a different school I wanted to go to the school where my brothers were but no had to do high school on my own not on my own I mean there were other people there <sighs> it's quite a weird school so all those friends I made well not made I don't know but that I got to know people kids in you know I was about eight so between um, yeah probably eight and nine so for about a year I was going to a junior school which was just up the road from where I lived it was where my nan and granddad lived after after us and then we moved and then I went to a whole a different school which was actually further away from the new place we moved to it was further away it was literally you needed a plane to get there which is another lie but it's a long walk and I only had little legs but it was what a heck of a walk so all those friends that I made and I did have some friends I was thinking it I actually earlier today my best friend I had two best friends really well I had a, I had a group of friends but when we moved when I first moved from the children's home I stayed with my stepmom's mother we all we all kind of all of us stayed there in this big white house um, but then we had to move out for whatever reason and I think the house was it was just derelict or something it wasn't I don't I don't remember I wasn't that interested I think uh, I think I'd got a copy of the Dandy comic and I wanted to read that I think I was looking at the cover when I was being told the reason we were moving. So I didn't really grasp it. But we moved. Not with her, not with the the grandmother, not with her mum. She moved to a lovely flat in this big block of flats. It was not a big, well I suppose quite a big block and she moved there and she was right on the face in it there was this big slope going up loads of spaces for parking and also downstairs those garages place gain spaces for parking you could on the left hand side if you go up if you go underneath the arch or you know there's all these garages she had a garage and there's the stairs on the left and there's the lift on the right I think there was the bin room as well I never needed to go in there really well, I think I stood in there once for about 10 minutes and then realised there was no point so I just well, actually I think I realised it wasn't the lift so I went into the lift, this is the elevator, 
Um, I used to use the stairs more often because I preferred it. So, I don't know how many floors there were. One, two... It wasn't like a really big, I think like six floors. Yeah, that's six floors. It wasn't, but it's lovely, really nice flats. I say that like I didn't see any of the other flats. I saw one, which was hers, but it was very nice. And if you go up the slope, it's the same, you know, it's sort of there's the stairs and there's the lift on the right. And she lived right on the corner, facing it, right the very top on the left hand side. She lived in that flat. But it's very wide. So that was, I think it might have been more than six floors. It might have been eight or ten out of, but I'm pretty sure it was like six. But it was very wide. So there was probably, I don't know, eight, eight flats long, maybe more, maybe ten. And then either side of it. So there's, so there's quite a few flats. And it was all council, all like council flats. And really nice, really. I mean, even I'd, I'd be very happy to live in a place like that. I mean, it's, I, you know, I don't need a place that size. I'd end up paying bedroom tax. Um, but it's a heck of a lot bigger than this. And I've got a fairly good size flat. But I suppose because it had two bedrooms the living room would be bigger, wouldn't it? Because there'd be more people. So you need more... Well, the living room... In my memory, the living room was about the size of my living room. But then there was like another bit, which is where the eating area was. I don't know. I'm not sure, but that's where she lived. And well, we moved into a council house, which was a three bedroomed council house. Tiny, tiny little box room, which is where I slept. Um, I say tiny, it wasn't big, but it was big enough for a, a bed and stuff. And then when everyone moved out, my nan still had it and she had a, like a single bed and sometimes I sleep in there. And it was well big enough for, you know, to sleep in. And two bedrooms that were quite big, a bathroom and stuff. So we lived in there. Like my, f my two brothers and myself and the parents. So we were there. At the time, it was a new build. I didn't know that term then, but the it's basically it was a new built house, and a lot of the area on that council estate was still being built. It was basically a building site, and it was built in an area that was countryside so there was lots of like foresty areas around so me and the other kids I guess we I suppose we knew each other from school I'm not sure but there was a lot of kids sort of on the estate and we used to go out exploring and um you know, making bow and arrows and having spears and having sword fights and stuff like that. And it was quite cool because, you know, there's quite a few of us. 
We used to spend time with each other. And my two best friends sort of were in that road. I've always been lazy that way. My best friend lives downstairs. I can't be bothered to travel. And uh, one was called Andrew. And he only had one kidney, I think. Um, so he was had spent a lot of time off school. So he was same, in the same year as me and stuff like that. And but I didn't. So I used to go around his house and see him, but I didn't see him too often at school because he was uh, he was poorly, you know. And my other friend was called Ian. I even remember his surname, which is weird. It came to me like in a dream. <laughs> it's a bit strange, isn't it? And he was my best friend. And he, his birthday was exactly the same day as my birthday. How about that then, eh? So we were both exactly the same age. Born exactly the same day of the year. You know, you know exactly the same age. Now, he ended up because I moved uh, what did I, I, I lived there when I was about seven and a half and then when I was eight my little brother was born and li you know, literally sort of my eighth birthday pretty much and I think we lived there probably for another six months maybe longer because I'm pretty sure I started school at nine at the, at the new junior school so I carried on at school all the way through that year yeah that makes sense wouldn't it So I was at that school for about a year and a half, pretty much. And I kind of got to know people. And my friend, who was Ian, he went to a different school to me then, because I moved. And I, I kind of kept in touch a little bit which is weird, it shouldn't really be that difficult because it was a tiny little town, really. But um, we moved near the town centre, which was handy. Especially if you, if you need to go to the off-licence and stuff. Which I didn't because I was nine, but, you know, I'm just saying it's handy to be in the town centre. We literally, at the end of our road was the sea. Well, it wasn't at the end of the road, but it was the end of the road, and then down a lot of steps, and then across the road, across the prom, and then down to the beach. So, you know, but you could see the beach. You could see the sea, rather. You couldn't see the beach from my house. You couldn't see the sea from my house. But if you start to walk up, you could see the sea in the distance, you know. which was quite nice so my friend Ian so I left his school and for the, for the next two years nine and ten we were at different junior schools And then when he started his school, he was the youngest one in his high school. And when I started, I was the youngest one in my high school. Because we were only 11 when we started. And a lot of the other kids 
we'd only just turned 11 and a lot of the other kids were nearly 12. But I kept in contact a little bit with Ian and with Andrew because, uh, you know, as I said, my nan and grand had moved into the house that we moved out of. And I used to sort of go and see Andrew because, you know, because he wasn't too well. So I used to sort of check up and my nan would tell me, oh, he's not doing too great or he's, you know, it's his birthday because she used to sort of get on really well with the family. And, uh, I kind of lost contact with Andrew which is a shame because his dad was brilliant we used to his dad used to take me and him out to into the fields and go for long walks I think he might have had a dog I'm not sure but that used to be quite nice you know just to get away from my family just like brothers and you know because there's always a lot of arguments you know just like brothers do so it's quite nice to get away from that and just relax also my little brother was a baby so he was always crying and pooing everywhere so it's like oh almost like having a ferret and I just it used to be nice to go for these long walks with my friend and his dad it was quite nice his dad was so relaxed you know just really calm which was nice I like calmness relaxation yeah And the other thing I did today is I put up two coat racks or uh, not coat racks like for clothes, clothes racks but they're attached to the wall and I bought them quite a while ago and I've been waiting to get help to put them up but today I decided to, to do it myself Oh yeah, that's what I did. I had a little bit of help with one of them. But I did this second one all by myself and I put the I put the TV up all by myself on the thing. It feels nice. So I'm gonna get two more of the clothes racks so I can put more clothes on. And that's free the whole space on the floor as well. So there's more space for Andre and I, don't know, I just I quite like the I kind of like the shed to be gone. <laughs> kind of a little bit now just for the space aspect of it but once it's done and once it's soundproofed it should be pretty cool but I like the I got some white I got one whiteboard one big whiteboard and um, which is in the kitchen at the moment. But I'm going to have that attached to the wall, the other wall opposite, which is all clear. And I'm going to get a few whiteboards and I can start writing ideas down for, you know, new recordings and not these recordings, but sort of the other stuff. And maybe if I put my mind to it and actually do write a book or two start to plan the book 
plan, what I'm going to write about. And I really don't know. Mm. Anyway, I think that's enough for me for one night. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. You do deserve to be happy. Lots of love.